saying I am a chartered accountant and a certified management accountant by profession and currently I am working at a big four accounting firm in Canada. Thank you for showing so much love on my video on overview of CMA USA. Um, so many of you found it very helpful and I am glad to see that. In case you haven't watched that previous episode, uh, make sure to check that out uh, in which we discuss what is CMA USA and the basic eligibility criteria and everything for it and today is kind of going to be a follow-up on that. Today we will be discussing about uh, the exam paper structure for CMA USA for both the parts. We will also be talking about the registration process for it and how much total fee is involved and then lastly we will be talking about uh, some of the study resources that you can use in order to uh, complete your CMA USA. Before we move forward, I just wanted to give a little reminder that in case if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure that you hit subscribe, you hit like or comment uh, because that would actually help this video reach a wider audience. Uh, and you know, never know, it might help someone else too and you would have played your part by just engaging with the video. So thank you in advance. All right, the first segment of this video is the exam paper structure and the passing scores that are needed. Um, first of all, as we discussed in the previous video, CMA USA has two parts. The first part is called financial planning, performance and analytics. And part two is called strategic financial management. All right, to pass the CM exam, you need a score of at least 360 out of 500. Um, however, this score is not like, you know, marks on an exam because this is kind of like a scale score. So IMA scales the scoring in order to ensure fairness and consistency across candidates. Uh, but uh, when you do receive your report card, it would tell you your score and it would definitely be above 360 in case you passed. Now both the exams are held on a computer and they're both four hours long. Um, the first three hours are for MCQs and you have around 100 MCQs in the first three hours to complete. And then in the last one hour, you have two essay questions. Uh, these essay questions means that they're longer numericals or longer theoretical questions in which you actually have to type out the answers because as I said, it's a computer-based exam. And in case you were able to, uh, you know, save some time on your MCQs, you can carry forward that saved time to your essay questions part. However, um, the software, when, you, when, you're, when you're giving your exams, the software will only let you move forward to the essay questions if you answered at least 50% of your MCQs correctly. In the essay questions, you have numerical as well as theoretical questions. And therefore, throughout the exam, there are two very key skills that are required. First of all, during the MCQs and also in the essay questions, you really need to have good uh, reading skills for English and also writing skills when it comes to theoretical uh, essay questions. But in order to also read and interpret the um, MCQs in that short time that you have, it's very, very necessary that you have sharp English reading and analytical and critical skills. And the second important skill is that you need to have a good typing speed, especially if you get a theoretical question that is a long one or even a numerical question in which you have to type out figures. Um, so you need to really practice that beforehand, not just leave it for the exam day because this could make all the difference uh, in saving your time, in actually completing your questions. Uh, so make sure that you practice on your computer before you actually give the exam. Another thing to know is that if you're not given your score immediately after you finish your exam, even though it did score your MCQs at the back end, it would not tell you anything about it. It's because they still need to score the essay question, which is which cannot be via computer. There has to be uh, some examiner who has to actually review and uh, mark your essay question. So it won't tell your score immediately. Your score will be revealed to you six months after you take the exam and it will be um, emailed to you and also posted to your online profile. In the unfortunate circumstance in which you fail your exam, you will be emailed a performance report by your testing center. Uh, as we mentioned in the previous video, testing centers are called ProMetrics. 
So your Prometric will actually email you a detailed performance report in which it will tell you on which sections of the exam did you perform well and where did you perform bad. So it will give you statistics regarding that, uh, which can help you improve on them before you take another exam. We can only take the exam once during one testing window. Um, as we discussed earlier, there were three testing windows in January, February, in May, June, and then in September, October. So you can only take an exam once during a testing window. So in case you fail, you will be emailed your performance report and before you can, you know, uh, appear in your next uh, exam, the next time, you will prob you would already have prepared according to your performance report and whatever you were weak at. And the very latest news on CMA exams is that IMA is now offering remotely proctored exams, which means that the candidates can take exams at locations other than the testing centers. So they can take it at their home or wherever they're at. Um, however, there are a lot of disclaimers that come with it. Um, I am going to leave a link for that web page in the video description box below. So make sure to check that out because it mentions some terms and conditions regarding what happens if uh, you know the candidate's internet is bad or you know there's some electricity issue and stuff like that so in case you're planning to appear in an exam like that which is remotely proctored make sure to check this link out and as far as i could see this remotely proctored exam is being offered almost all across the world except just a few countries so make sure to check that list of countries out in case it is not being offered in the country in which you're in all right, step one to appearing for CMA exams would be that you enroll for IMA's membership. Now, IMA offers several categories of membership, and so make sure to read the description for those categories and see if you fulfill those eligibility criteria. Uh, it's important because your annual fee and your registration fee would be dependent on the type of category you select. Another important thing to note is that IMA is increasing its membership fee on 1st March 2022. So in case you are planning to enroll with IMA, it is better to do it before 1st March because then you'll have to pay a higher fee. Um, let's look at the categories in detail and then we'll also look at the fee in detail. And I'm also going to leave a link in the description box below for the fee details on IMA's website. So if you use the link provided in the video description box, you would probably land over here which says join IMA and gives the categories of membership. The first type is the professional membership. It says if you're on a career path as an accountant or financial manager, this membership type is for you. Uh, then we go on to the academic membership uh, and that says that if you're a faculty member, then this membership type is for you. Then the third thing is one year student membership or a two year student membership. So one year studio is basically the same thing. It's just that if you pay it for two years, then you're just done with it for two years. You don't have to go back again and again. But for this type, as an IMA student member, you have to be enrolled in at least six undergraduate or graduate credit hours or the equivalent per semester in order to be eligible for this type of membership. So make sure that you fulfill the eligibility criteria. If you have any confusions and if you require any clarifications, make sure to email IMA and ask them whether you qualify for it or not. And so this is about it. There is a price difference in all of these categories of membership. If you use the link for pricing provided in the video description box below, then you would probably land on this page which says important updates for CMA candidates. And over here you can see IMA membership fees and its membership type and the current price and then the price beginning from March 1st, 2022. And you can see that they're increasing approximately $30 for professional membership and approximately $15 for academic and then for student something similar. So this is the change in fee and if you're looking to get enrolled uh, and if you want to save some money then it's better to register before 1st March 2022. Step 2 is to pay the CMA entrance fee which is a non-refundable one-time fee and 
and this also depends on the type of membership that you have taken as for the IMA membership fee similarly the CMA entrance fee is also increasing on 1st March 2022 so in case you want to enroll it's better to do it before 1st March and then lastly you have to pay the CMA exam fee per exam whenever you're registering for the exam you will be paying that fee so uh, that fee again is increasing as of 1st March 2022 so for whatever exam you want to register for 2022 if you do it before 1st March you would be paying the old rate for it uh, and if you register after then of course the new rate will be applicable I am now reflecting both the old and the new CMA entrance fee and the CMA exam fee by membership types. On the pricing page, you will see the CMA program fees, which mentions the CMA program professional and the CMA program academic or student fee. Uh, for the CMA professional program, the entrance fee is $250 and the CMA exam fee per part is $415. It is being increased to $280 and $460 per part. Um, the CMA program, um, student or academic membership type, uh, has an entrance fee of $188, which is being increased to $210, and then a CMA exam fee of $311 per part, which is being increased to $345 per part. Um, apart from that, what you see here, the CMA annual fee is basically to renew your membership each year in order to keep availing the benefits as a member of IMA. So whatever resources you get, like the uh, courses and stuff like that, uh, your profile remains active only if you keep renewing your membership, just like for any other professional accounting certification. All right, now we have gotten to what are you going to use in order to study for your CMA exams. Um, and for that, first of all, when you do register for your IMA membership and your CMA exam, you will be provided with your uh, study support package, which will include uh, questions from past exams, which will give you an idea of what type of questions can you face in the exams. And uh, it, it does give you a general overview of the whole curriculum. So that's something to, good to start with. Secondly, IMA has on its website given a list of CMA resources and I have provided a link to the web page in the video description box below. So make sure to check it out because on that page you will see so many different resources. There's so many tips for appearing in your exams, for time management and different stuff like that. So it's very good if you can go through it all. The third thing that you have to do is you have to choose a study partner. And by study partner, I mean a study resource partner that has partnered, partnered with IMA to provide course material for CMA USA. The list of these study partners has been provided on IMA's website, so I'll link it in the video description box below. You can go to these individual partners' websites and check out their resources, their packages, their fee and stuff. And you can do your own comparison to find out which one you want to avail. Uh, for now, I'll just let you know what I did. Uh, what I did was that I availed the CLIMS uh, study resources uh, in which uh, we were provided with a book uh, for both the parts and then we were provided with this software which actually replicated the, you know, the whole software that will actually appear in our testing center when we actually take the exam. It generally made me aware of the whole software that will come in my exam and so that I'm not unfamiliar with it when I actually take the exam. So that was very helpful and that is very necessary in order to save you a lot of time during your exam. I also used some of Hawk's materials. So there were some uh, topics that I thought were not appropriately covered in Lime book. So that's where I referred to Hawk's material. I didn't use it for all. I didn't use it for CMA part one, but, but I did use some of Hawk's for CMA part two. I wanted to give you all an idea and a comparison of all the fee for the different study partner resources. However, for each study partner, they offer several different kinds of packages like a premium package or an advanced package or a basic package and uh, you know, the, there are differences between these three. Uh, so I couldn't give you a price comparison for it because whatever package you select will be very dependent on what, what your educational background is. Uh, for example, people who are already doing ACCA or CA, ICAW or CA, they might not need such a 
such an advanced uh, you know resource to go with whereas people who have no knowledge of cost accounting and performance management and financial management beforehand might need that so please decide as per your own preferences and your own educational backgrounds um, however there is one tip that i can give you and that is that most of these course providers do give free trials uh, so you can book your free trial and try to see if that's uh, if that resource suits you better However, before you do that, please make sure to do your homework on whatever you know you want to know about CMA USA and also on the content structure and everything about it because only if you have done your free or own homework, it would be better to avail the free trial then because you would actually be able to make use of the free trial better. You would be able to compare the different courses better so do make sure to do your own homework before you go ahead and book a free trial. If you click the link for material providers provided in the video description box, you will come to this page, which has a list of all the material providers that have partnered with IMA to provide content for CMA USA. And you can go and check each of these resources to see if anyone offers a free trial and then if you want to test it out you can book a free trial go through the content and then uh, compare and then identify which one suits your needs the best apart from the study resources that you will get from the study partners there's hardly anything that you need to refer to externally uh, there might be some things that you don't understand and you might you know uh, search them on youtube or just google them but apart from that there's nothing else needed and I believe it can be done on self-study, especially if you're already a CA student or an ACCA student or an ICIW student. However, this is also one thing that depends on the kind of person you are. If you do need a teacher, then um, you might need one for this too. And uh, you will definitely need a teacher if you have, if you do not have a background for accounting certifications like ACCA. CA. Uh, so make sure that you do find a reliable teacher in case you're planning to appear in your CMA USA exams. Lastly, I do want to stress that there is a significant amount of investment involved in order to pursue a CMA certification. Fortunately, when I wanted to do it, there was this promotion package that was being offered by IMA through which my registration fee and everything was significantly reduced and I availed that package. I don't see that offer running uh, right now. It might run in the future, but at the moment it's not running. So the amount of financial investment is higher. So in order to make sure that you obtain benefit from it, make sure that you do your own due diligence regarding the kind of benefits that you want to avail from it. This would depend on the country that you're in or on the country that you want to work in. You might need to check that in the country in which you're in, whether the local cost management accounting certification would be preferred or this would be preferred, you might need to make that decision. Uh, secondly, make sure that you have a good bachelor's degree or, a, or master's degree or a professional certification like CA, ACCA alongside. As I discussed in the previous video, CMA certification is not uh, intended to be a standalone certification. Uh, which is why for its eligibility you do need a bachelor's degree or a professional certification to go along with it all right that's it for today i hope the content in today's video was helpful for you in order to further understand about cma usa if you have any questions please make sure to leave them in the comments below and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also hit the like button because that is going to keep me motivated and keep coming back to give you all this information. I also share tips and general guidance on my Instagram and Facebook. So in case you're not following me there, make sure to check those pages out. And if you like them, then you can follow me there too. I also upload videos on my immigration journey from Pakistan to Canada. So if you're someone who's interested in that, make sure to check those videos out too. And I'll come back with another video on CMA USA and its content and maybe a study plan or something like that. I'll think about it and I'll also be reading your comments to see what you want to uh, know. And based on that, I'll be coming up with more content and I'll keep seeing you on my channel. Until next time, goodbye.